Hi, I'm Alvaro Enrique, and this is one more lesson of one of Cesar Guerrapeche's solo guitar works. If you're watching me on YouTube, you will see on the description a video of me playing that work, as well as a link to a blog post which I uploaded all the videos I have done so far. We are about to end this series with the Cesar Guerrapeche solo guitar works. I play the compositions and I also give you a lesson with tips and hints so you can play the works of this master of the Brazilian guitar. Every first Saturday, every first Friday, every first Friday of each month, I upload one video and one lesson. We are ending on March 2021. Only this January, come on, January 1st was a Friday, so I, I deserve some rest as well. So only this January we are uploading on the second Friday, but usually it's on every first Friday of each month. Um, so let's talk about the 10 Ludicas. First, uh, Ludica is a name that comes from the Greek word ludos, which means to play or play be it play as a sport or to play as in a joke. Um, these ludicas, I believe the series all pieces have subtitles that clarify what they are referring to, with what is the statical universe of each piece, but they are quite easy pieces. I would rank them um, in the level of a little bit more difficult than the very first Studio Sensilios by Brauer, more or less the same level as this famous Caroli and Antino. <laughs> the same level as Targa, um, Adelita, those easy Targa pieces. However, in general, they have lots of shocks, flats, naturals, changes of measures, so I would recommend you to pay extra care with uh, reading, especially reading the correct notes and reading the correct measure. So to make it easier, what I recommend you to do is while practicing to say out loud the name of each note. It is better if you use any system which you say one note differently if it's a natural, a sharp or a flat. Kodali has thought on a very good one. The Germans also use a very good one. You can use as you like, uh, but it's very important because it avoids or it diminishes the possibility of reading mistakes. I would say the same about uh, errors, mistakes, reading the correct measures. So. I recommend you to also practice very slowly, saying out loud the beat, at least the beat, and then it will become easier for you to understand each change of measure and technically it's, as I told you, in the level of Carcassis Andantino or Tarrega's Lagrima or Adelita, his easy pieces. So let's talk in detail of each piece. Because there are 10, I'll just talk about the main points which you should care. Ah, one more thing before we go there, a general, uh, general comment. These Ludicas, they deal a lot with sound with color. Most of what the pieces are is about color. And to really enjoy and take the best of each piece, you have to use all areas.
area of the guitar. You have played, someone has played for you when explaining different colors on the guitar, people do play from here to here to show you how different the guitar can sound. But when they really have to play, what they do, they just use this area. For these ludicas that won't be enough, you really will have to use everything, especially considering the whole 10 sets. Okay, so let's begin with logica number one, Fantasieta, little fantasy. Um, this piece begins with very free uh, tempo, you can play very freely. So. Then a little bit more in tempo. Only on the third time that you should really play in tempo. And so on. On the end of the very first page, page on the end of the very first page, there is a sign which I'm not sure if it's a misprint or why, it, what's doing there, because it ends with a sign, two diagonal lines, uh, and traditionally, the use of those lines is a uh, abbreviation. It's it tells you to repeat the last two bits because it's two uh, lines. Be Had it been only one diagonal line, it would be to repeat only the last bit. If it were three, the three last bits and so on. But it doesn't make sense. Or at least I'm in doubt if it's really that or if it's just a pause. I don't know, I don't have the answer. I didn't have the chance to see a manuscript of this Ludicus to really solve this out, but it may be a misprint. There will be this sign in all the Ludicus and for this edition, for this piece, I believe they intend to show pauses, but I'm not sure. So what do I do? I play differently. Sometimes I play as if it were a pause. Sometimes I play as if it were to repeat the last bit. Which is right? Well, at least one of them is right. <laughs> but I really don't know which one. If you do, if you know what would be uh, the best way to read that abbreviation sign, please write in the comments. I will thank you a lot. About One more thing about the publication of this piece. It is published by a Brazilian company, Irmãos Vitale. And unfortunately, they are published separately. So by each one of the 10 scores may be a little bit well, not good, but that's what we have of the, on the moment. Uh, they are implementing more and more uh, cells of PDF files. They are being quite easier to find by, uh, each day. So probably when you are seeing, watching me this video, I probably there will be already uh, a possibility to buy the PDFs cheaper and organized, all 10 of them, okay? Nice. Uh, the piece is quite easy technically. technically. Uh, there are only two places which I should highlight. On the second page, first system, third measure, we have this. To play that very fast notes easily, you really should follow 
the written fingering. So three on the F, two, one, two. At first, all the possibilities may sound well, but really to play that fast, you should, and also keeping the A, B, and the E as long as possible, that's the best possibility. So use the fingering as written. Um, on the very last system of the page, there is a sign. It begins with a sign. It is uh, G sharp uh, and then tied to a chord, which the highest note of this chord is the G sharp. Um, that means that it's, it's a different way to write that the composer wants an arpeggio, but instead of making the arpeggio beginning on the lowest note, as it's the standard, you should begin the arpeggio from the highest note. But pay attention, the highest note, the G sharp, is here on the second string. So, to really show, to play an arpeggio from the highest note to the lowest, you, have, you shouldn't play I-M-E-I-P, A-M-I-P, not A-M-I-P, but M-A-I-P. from the highest note to the lowest one. And then we have uh, another arpeggio, which is just written arpeggio, so you should play the opposite. It sounds better. It, it, it's an interesting contrast. Then there is a less arpeggio. You could play also from top to bottom, on from bottom to top, or you can just be, use make a very fast arpeggio. If you do so, just play all notes with the thumb, and because it's so fast, it won't be that important to end with the F instead of the E. Okay. Then let's go to the logica number two. There are many one to go. Uh, on the edition is already written. It's important for you to make so much easier if you follow that. To even when you are not playing yet, you should place your fingers accordingly to the notes that you will play later. Uh, that makes this very easy. The piece is also quite easy, quite, uh, there are no, not so many challenges. The biggest challenge is, on the very first page, you have to play this melody with the thumb, because you are also going to play the accompaniment with I, M and A. There won't be a possibility for you to play the bass melody with all the finger than the thumb. And reaching this needed speed for the thumb may be challenging depending on where you are. So what should you do? First practice slowly, just the thumb, only the rhythm, open notes, one same string, for example. Of course, I'm already playing in tempo. You start practicing slowly. Then you start practicing slowly as well. Only open strings, but now not one string only, but on the corresponding string which you would play the note written. So I'll practice slowly uh, now. It will be. For example, 
happening, you keep on practicing until you reach the speed. Then you practice the melody playing only with the thumb. And so on, only the melody. When you reach the desired speed playing like that, then it's time to really practice the whole page. Because then you, you have reached the thumb speed and then you come up. I like to play in this first part with a more metallic sound. Because the melody is on the basses, the basses on the metallic lead doesn't sound that aggressive. They sound just with more, uh, they just shine more. But they are not that aggressive than the trebles on the metallic region. Then when I have to play this melody on the second part, we have some remembrance of the rhythm of the, that very first part. If I do contrasting colors, when I play the same color of the very first page on its small fragments on the second part, they, I will make easier for the listening to recognize that there are things that he has heard before being repeated. So it would be something like that. And so on. Sorry for the mistake here. And that it's very good because the listener can recognize that. And I'm making him or her more comfortable. Especially if that kind of listener that is a little afraid of classical music or the classical guitar because he or she has not studied enough or is not a very good connoisseur of classical music. Uh, that's a very good way to show that th nobody needs to have a great education to feel the power of the music. So. Uh, one more thing before uh, I, I end. When you have to start pra practicing, when you start playing, please place your fingers as written on the score, prepare yourself, then you start. But when you have to repeat the first part, there won't be enough time for you to do that. That's okay because uh, the very first part, very first time that the bass melody is played, there will be only the melody, no accompaniment, then it's okay. There will be enough time for you to then place your fingers. But that's because you are repeating. When you're going to start, please make sure that you are all set before you go. Let's go to the third ludica. So, Third Ludica, accompanied organ. Also, you have to practice the right hand a little before you really start practicing the music. They have this right hand pattern, which uh, it's not difficult, but can be challenging, especially for the thumb. Uh, you have to make a lot of changes with the thumb from the fourth to the sixth, 60th string, some of them very fast, so it's good for you to be a little bit more fluent on that before start playing the piece. So uh, try to start at just practicing the right hand fingering before really practicing the piece. <laughs> Just these very first measures is enough. When you play them fluently enough, 
on the desired speed, then you really should start playing the, the piece itself. The right hand finger is, it, it couldn't be any simpler. It's just two, three, and four, and you keep on that the whole piece. So uh, just beware of the tempo and the right hand, especially those uh, thumb changes, especially when they happen fast, and you're going to play it very well. Let's go to the fourth Ludica, Berimbau. Berimbau is a very important mu instrument for uh, Afro-Brazilian culture. It's a stringed instrument, but it's used as if it were a percussion instrument. It produces only two notes uh, with a difference of a tone, a major second. And this Ludica does make the guitar sound very close to the berimbau, at least in my opinion, more than other pieces that try to recreate that spirit as well. Uh, the composer suggests you to make a short vibrato on the highest note. So. If you haven't heard the Bating Bow yet, just write it uh, on, on YouTube and you're going to watch lots of people playing them, some true virtuosos. Uh, and but here they are, we are just using the more basic rhythms of Berimbau. And you're going to notice that it's quite a metallic instrument. So it's best if you play it on the very metallic region of the instrument. As in the Dança Negra, if you make a contrast, be it with the accompaniment be it with the melody that comes later you're also helping your listener to understand the piece better, to relate things and they can realize for themselves that there is no need to study classical music, to be a listener and to be involved by its magic and power. Um, Odair Assad, one of the Assad brothers, once suggested me to uh, play in tambora on the repeat. Uh, I don't know if that's right. I don't know if Gahapeshi are mad at me at his uh, tomb but I just do so I think it's funny I think it creates a good contrast it makes the guitar sounds even more like a berimbau and I play it so as suggested by Odaira Sand it's just a suggestion so feel free not to follow it and repeat just you have played the first part, that's fine. But if you want to, you have to play tambora, okay? It's very important, you have noticed, that you have to really use the whole area of the instrument to achieve true different colors. That will demand for you. If you're not playing with long sleeves, you have to use something, some a simple piece of cloth placed here will be enough for you to easily slide your arm on the guitar and reach any place very fast. If you really prefer the feeling of your own skin touching the guitar, then it can be a little bit slower. You will have to rely on the flexibility and elasticity of your skin, but you can reach those regions as well, okay? It's important for you to do so. Let's go to the next Ludica. Ludica number four is one of the most 
um, lovely, ludicrous. Uh, a modinha. Moda is another way in Portuguese to say piece of music. Uh, and, but usually when they add this inho, this inha, I'm sure you have heard that already before in other words, at least in Ronaldinho, uh, it is used uh, to make it more lovely. Uh, it's, it, it means, in fact, uh, a little, uh, but we use it not to say that it's smaller, but to say that it's lovely. So when it's a lovely piece of music, usually there are love songs. We have also, we use also the word modão, which is the big moda. And by big, we doesn't mean that it's taller <laughs> or stronger, but that it's lively, that it's um, faster, uh, more exciting pieces. So you should play as if it were a love song. It demands very freedom of tempo. And especially in pieces like that, when we mention freedom of tempo, we mean mainly that you should stretch the note's duration. The rubato, it's written rubato, moderato un poco rubato. The rubato will make us think that some notes will be longer and some notes will be shorter. It does sound better to do so in many other instruments. But on the guitar, I think shortening notes, especially in a piece like that, doesn't add real emotion. It's better just to stretch, not to short. Let me show you. So I'll play the very first two measures. First, only stretching without shortening at no, no note at all. Then, rubato, as people often say, you stretch some to shorten others. Okay, I may have exaggerated a little bit, but I don't think it worked for that piece, especially because most of what makes it lovely, interesting, are the colors that they create. There are many dissonant chords here which the dissonance is not our tonal or harmonic feature. The dissonances are there to create a different color that is only possible with that combination of intervals. Does it sound weird to you? Well, you should hear the bolero by Maurice Ravel, because that's exactly what he does there. It's just Two melodies played at the same time with the same rhythm all over and he's adding instruments but not only instruments, intervals. The instruments are not playing in unison or octaves, they are playing on different intervals and that intervals, as well as the instruments of course, but that intervals creates a color and that's what I'm going to see in that piece and the listener to get that he or she needs time that's why stretching the notes enhances the expression of this piece because it makes easier for your listener to really figure out what's going on one more thing it's very important on that piece because it's about color and color created by intervals that you should choose wisely which note 
for each chord you should stress because depending on which note you stress it's a totally different color and how can you do that when you're playing barking uh, notes I will exaggerate here a little bit uh, you kind of glue your fingers together uh, but the note that you want to be stressed you just lower the finger a little bit I'm exaggerating here but you just lower a little bit and then it will sound stronger for example if I want uh, let me play this last chord from the uh, second measure if I want to stress the A so I have to put the I a little bit under now let me stress the D so I have to put the M lower I want to stress the E so it's the A which I should stress and you have recognized for each note that I, I have stressed it sounds completely different and you have to try that experiment the possibilities and choose which one you like best uh, it's also very important because depending on the region also I've done that only on what would be the normal color but also very different you have to try and that piece is that piece is really about that about color about how expressive color can be so stretching the notes also allow you to easier move from the extremes of colors and make it more interesting and it's really about you practicing and trying to found find the colors which suits you best there's no wrong answer that's no right answer they're just your answer let's go to the next ludica so ludica number six uh, it really wants to depict a very typical uh, brazilian instrument called uh, the brazilian viola uh, it's very similar to the guitar but it uses steel strings and they have it has a very metallic sound so for you to really make your guitar sound as a brazilian viola you really should play as metallic as possible i even repeat the finger so i can make sure that i am pl plucking the note uh, in a place that i'm also touching the bone <laughs> on the string because that's the way i should sound as metallic as possible and only play as metallic as possible i can resemble the color of the viola later you see that our many slurs he uses uh, this notation that also julian Brin used which when he really wants a slur he writes a dotted line not a straight line but a dotted line means a literal slur okay uh, so later he asks you on the end of the very first page to play a note and make a slur to three notes but you're playing only two but you have to play I slurred you three notes. How can you know? Well, in fact, Gerhard Peixe was very friendly when he wrote that way because it's even e it's so much easier because your finger will somehow touch the string just down it. That when he says that you can't sound three notes, it's just forgiving your 
possible mistake. So don't mind as much that you should really, I have to pluck the other string. No, don't worry. Your finger will do that. For you. If you worry that much of playing also the other string, you may be reaching for quite easy. Okay. Uh, later, he changes the rhythm. When he changes for, for six, eight measure, I really don't recognize the rhythm. It just it does sound so Afro Brazilian, but I can't recognize really which one. So that's why I also try to make a contrast, a contrast, a change of colors, and it sounds as little. It sounded to me a little bit like dissonance being resolved. There's more normal or more sweet sound timbre, color, uh, I think it suits that better than this extreme metallic aggressive sound which the Brazilian viola is easily achieves. Let's go to the next Ludica. So Ludica is number seven, dialogue. Well, well, first of all, we have to change tuning. If you're playing the whole set, one thing that works well for you to, to play the pieces. You have to, before you play it, tune your sixth string much lower than a D. Then go up to a D, talk something to the audience, introduce your piece, introduce the next pieces, Remember, the next Ludica, number 8, will also feature the 6th string in D. So you can talk about both of them and tie them together. It will take about one minute, one minute and a half. Then you check the tuning once more. And then you're ready to begin. And you're not going to have extreme tuning problems. Um, so it does resemble... Uh, the static universe of the uh, Movimento Armorial. It's a musical movement which Carapace was part of it, and he used a lot of flutes, very, very fast flute melodies. So it does have to sound fast. And when the melody is on the soprano, the first string, Sometimes we feel that we want to play just with A, M, and I, so. But it's very difficult to reach the needed speed on that part with that fingering. It's very difficult to reach them that consistently. But with M, I, and P, quite easy. So why insisting in a right hand fingering that takes a lot of effort uh, and it, it may creates your tension when there isn't much easier one. So play with every time there is a melody and accompaniment on the high note uh, try to use the thumb on the third string not I not the eye finger, okay? Uh, on the second page, uh, there are some repeated chords. Uh, he used some variation with just straight lines indicating the rhythm, but you should repeat the same chord. Uh, Turinas Sevillana uses the very same uh, notation as well. And he asks later for you to repeat that rhythm. Because it asks you to repeat and repetition as much as you like. I think it's interesting for you to have some fun. You know, uh, you can start playing a little bit more square. Then you should play a little more rhythmical, more funny, with more swing. You change the fingering. Have some fun. You know, this is not really popular music, but it's as close to popular music as it can. So 
you can improvise or at least have some fun, amuse your audience. You, know? uh, you don't need to play square all the time. Have some fun here. Uh, then you repeat the chord and, and so on. The last two systems don't pay. Uh, you you don't need to be worried that much about the fingering. Okay, it's finger number two on the sixth string, finger number three on the first. They're always on the same fret, and you can go on. If you're trying to read very carefully each note, you may think that you may be playing wrongly. No, just trust that fingering and go on that you're going to play perfectly, okay? Nice, Ludicus number eight. So Ludicus number eight, uh, Brazilian Diferencias. I believe you have played the differences on Guarda Mila Vacas, or you're going to play it soon. Uh, a differencia is very similar to a theme and variations, uh, but a differencia is more related to the melody itself, and a theme and variations is more related to the harmony. Here, Carapesh uh, keeps the melody very recognizable. But the harmony, he changed the harmony all the time. I think that's why he preferred to use the term differencias instead of theme and variations. Of course, 20th century theme and variations are a different kind of animal. But at least the canonical uh, form, theme and variations, the way you learn at your theory lessons the harmony is respected, which Gavish yeah, doesn't. Um, I prefer, I, I have noticed while I was studying that piece that some of the uh, later differences, the fourth, the fifteenth one, they sound very good with a more metallic sound, not that metallic as Ludica 6, but a more metallic one like. At least to my taste, I like it better than. I think here I can enjoy the harmony better. But that's my taste. And I've noticed that the very first differences and the theme. Uh, they work very well on the Dolce region. So what I do is make a, 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 a transition to the very Dolce to a metallic color, a progressive transition, little by little, a little bit more metallic. Um, you can do that, or you can vary the color or vary as you like. There's no, there's no wrong answer here. There is only one tricky part on second page, second measure, second system, second page, second system, first measure. We have this chord, then, then we have this very challenging jump because it's to a cap, a barre, a half barre, barre, two and three, and you are using the three as well. Um, I prefer to face that challenge uh, instead of using other alternative fingering because uh, an alternative fingering that could would work had to end the D here on the fourth finger, then I'm, I can easily change here. But to make that, I would have to uh, make the, the jump sooner and I could harm my legato. I 
I prefer. I think it harms the legato later, especially if I. And then I start writing the arpeggio. Before I really jump, I already play the sixth string. But to practice that jump, what can you do? First, play the same fingering but without changing positions. Then changing one position. Then two. Then three. face can be easier so and so on you should practice like that if you want to play be it the written fingering or if you're trying to find an alternative you also have to do something similar. It's a very good way to study uh, fast position changes, by the way. So, Ludicus number nine. Ludicus number nine, the main challenging is reading. What's, what's happening here that makes reading that challenging? First, that's not the main challenge, but I'll talk about the reading on the beginning. Uh, really follow the written fingering, but then there are some, well, they have zeros, but they are not open string. That's how harmonics are written on the violin. Gehapetius' first instrument was the violin, that's why it's written so. It's written harmonically to give a tip, but because it's so rare on the guitar repertoire to have harmonic written like that, you can make mistakes. But they are harmonics, all of them, and only one of them is not on the 12th fret. So it's E, 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 G, E, B, A, B, B, D, F sharp will be here seventh string from the second seventh fret second string that's only note that's not on the 12th fret okay uh, but then let's go to the main challenge you have to play something at the first and start of the beat the very first beat and then later you have to play repeated notes which should be open strings. Very often there are some notes, some chords, some intervals that you should play on the every first beat, but there are two options. One of them allows you to play the open string as needed, the other doesn't. So, what I recommend to you to solve these challenges very fast. Use one color for the first string, a different color for the second, another for the third, and so on. Use some crayons, use some uh, pencils, colored pencils, and just you can just highlight or make just a small dot on the first beat or just below each note on the first beat to show you which note that that note should be played or which open string should be kept open then you're not making any mistakes because the, the real mistake that will happen here is for example um, let's play uh, second page um, Fourth system, second measure. 
but I'll start now. Let's go fourth, second page, four, fourth system, first measure. Start here. <laughs> here you can play it here if you play here you can use the third string if you play it here you can use the third string that's really the challenge here and this is a challenge of memory and of reading if you use covers to guide you or any mark to guide you while reading, there will not be any serious mistake at all. Very easy. So let's go to the last Ludica of all. What amazes me on the Ludica number 10 is it's, it was written on, the, on 1980. Of course, there was rock music and there were also some punk bands on that time but it sounds like some hard heavy metal that we only heard some decades later on the late 80s or in the early 90s play like that and it's already heavy metal um, I'll, I'll, I have to start uh, make you aware that on the reading when they have this glued notes side by side they have to be played together so for example when they have uh, C and D glued it's together two D's yes two D's E flat and D together as well really together That's how it should sound. Um, the chord, when they have dots, you have to play staccato. But be aware because you have to first play then staccato. Not. Don't forget the bass. chords you have pages will uses once more a violin typical notation on this guitar piece on the violin because of the bow the the bottom part of the bow is on a square shape and the tip the upper tip of the bow is in a triangle shape that's why on the violin when they want you to uh, to play going down they use a square and when they want you to play going up they use a triangle a small triangle like that going down and he uses the exact same notation here to indicate when you he wants you to go down and when he wants you to go up just like the valley they also use some accents uh, this those accents show you that you should play that piece a little bit stronger. It coincides with the notes that you should play down. That's right, because gravity helps you to play stronger. That's important to mark, be it on the violin, be it on the guitar, which time you have to go down and which time you have to go up. Because when you go down, you play stronger easier so that's what it should be happening here but quite easy quite easy chords then repeat and beware on the last part you play that only in harmonics that strange diagonal notation which i don't know <laughs> what i should do there and then you start with very interesting full of color chord and where you play that chord create very different colors so you have to try 
and find which places you find them better. Ah, and of course, I have just played with the thumb. If you play, for example, with the eye finger. Four. And then it sounds even more different. Try some options and choose which one sounds best. So, Ludicus is more about color than anything else. You have to spend some time trying to find different colors and playing the guitar in different regions and really use all you've got. Don't play only on this very narrow region which most guitarists play full recitals on. No, really enhance your color possibilities by plucking the strings in all extremes, in all in between. That's what this music demands to sound as great as Gehapeshi wrote. Have fun!